Right, this is hot off the press. We knew that Ireland had a start date, and we knew that that start date was June the 8th, after some significant uncertainty a week ago today. A uh, press release has just come through to me here. Uh, NACE is going to host the Irish racing resumption as Guinea's set for opening week of action. So racing to resume under strict protocols at NACE on June the 8th and the Irish 2000 and 1000 Guineas at the Curra 13th of June, which if the British plan and the roadmap, the 1st of June roadmap were to take place would mean that the new market Guineas would be exactly a week prior to the Irish 2000 and 1000 Guineas. Jumps racing to resume at Limerick on June the 22nd, which would be earlier than jump racing is intended to start in the UK and tiered prize money reductions across all grades, 48 hour declarations to assist health screening protocols. So that would bring that in line with what we're accustomed to on the flat in um, Britain and no apprentice or claiming races in the first two weeks following resumption. So joining me now is the chief executive of Horse Racing Ireland, Brian Kavanagh. Brian, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nick. A fraught couple of weeks for you. Just explain how it's been for you through the last few days. Uh, not too bad, Nick. Uh, I mean, uh, the news came through on Friday from the government that they, they had uh, uh, moved forward the date for resumption of racing from phase three to phase two of our our uh, emergence from the lockdown, and that, that, that gives us three extra weeks, which is really welcome. Uh, so we start on June the 8th, uh, and at that stage we would have been off racing for 11 weeks. Uh, we'd have missed 87 fixtures, so um, you know there's a, there's a big backlog uh, to get through, but, but, but clearly the, the news is welcome uh, on Friday, and now we've, uh, we've three weeks to get ready to start, and I think everyone's getting stuck into that now. How much did the initial news that you might be pushed back from your initial start date in, in May take you by surprise and take Horse Racing Ireland by surprise? Yeah, it, it was, it was a, shock, a surprise, all right, because, um, you know, uh, it, it, it included horse racing in with, uh, with all sports and general contact sports, which is not uh, the way in which uh, racing is treated generally in Ireland, where we answer to the Department of Agriculture. Uh, that said, you know, the government are handling the, the pandemic in Ireland in a very careful and cautious manner and, and a prudent manner, and, and, and it's quite effective, uh, you know. So um, they, they created a system then immediately for particular sectors who felt they, they could uh, conduct their business safely uh, sooner than the phasing in which they were allocated could make the case. We made that case over the course of the last week or so or 10 days, and, and I'm glad to say it was, it was, it was well received. And it means not just the racing, but the whole sales breeze up sector of the industry can get going again here in Ireland. So, so as I said, it was welcome news when it came through. How worried were you that you would end up on the 29th of June, starting then? Well, it, it was very difficult because, you know, Ireland, uh, you, you know, probably, is, as you know, is the biggest breeder of horses in Europe and supplies horses to other countries in Europe. So to see France, Germany starting and, and Britain uh, hopefully starting on the 1st of June, you know, Ireland would have been marooned on the 29th of June. So uh, uh, that would have been a real concern for the industry and, and caused a lot of uh, anxiety within, the, within both the racing and breeding community. That was the, the case we, we, we made to government and, and, and I'm, I'm pleased to say they listened to it. Uh, the teacher mentioned horse racing specifically this week and, and gave the justification for, for horse racing going ahead in Ireland and, and mentioned that, that it was a, a multi-billion pound industry and absolutely crucial to the rural economy, the economy as a whole. Um, are you happier now that you've got a, a better foothold in government than perhaps you felt 10 days ago? Yeah, I think that's that, that's perversely one of the, one of the outcomes of, of, of this situation is that uh, you know people outside of our sector now realise that it's not just about what happens on the track. It's not just about you know big crowds and champagne bars. That there's a, a very significant industry behind us, and that racing is the sort of the fulcrum on, on, on which it's all based. And, and when that stops, the rest of it grinds to a halt. So we were able to make that case, and 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 and, and you know the industry made its voice heard as well, and, and that, 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 that will be a benefit, a, a longer-term benefit, as you say. It's, it's wonderful to have our, our, our Taoiseach, you know, speaking about the industry in those terms, uh, and um, uh, hopefully that, 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 that will stand to us in the future. Just tell me a little bit about the specific protocols that your uh, horsemen and uh, racecourse staff will have to go through in order to get this off the ground. Of course, you have had significant experience of racing behind closed doors before the lockdown. 
Yeah, we've strengthened those protocols significantly. I think there, there were 25 to 30 pages for the 10 fixtures mm-hmm. before the lockdown. They're now up to, to almost 80 pages. Uh, you know, So we've implemented all the government's advice in relation to social distancing. And I think I've said to you before that race courses are, are quite suited to that. In addition to that, you know, we will have... Uh, preliminary health screening, uh, you know, 24 hours before uh, attending. Everybody will have to sign up, complete a health questionnaire, be signed off by the IHRB medical officer. We will have temperature screening, uh, body temperature screening on on arrival at the race course uh, for everyone is there. We have specific details of who can and cannot attend, and they're very strict to the the objective being to absolutely minimise the number of people uh, on the site uh, at, at any particular time. Uh, you know, there'll be mandatory wearing of masks for, for, for or face coverings for people working indoors uh, uh, on the racetrack. Uh, you know, the normal social distancing requirements in relation to, to hand washing, uh, you know, sneezing, coughing etiquette. Uh, we will have a specific COVID-19 officer at each meeting to effectively enforce the protocols and, and to assist people, advise people. And we will we'll arrange a series of webinars over the next couple of weeks, you know, to, to familiarise people with those uh, across the whole range. So they're, they're very strict. They're based on our government's guidelines and indeed they're based on a lot of consultation with the BHA, with France Gallo and with Deutsche Gallup and, and indeed with some of our uh, further flung uh, uh, um, counterparts. So we're all sharing information and practices and experiences because we've never faced this before. So, so we're all learning from each other. So you issued, as, as you say, it's a, it's a 73 page document, or at least I got 73 pages, you, you might have got a few more, but you, you've issued this huge document, um, and, and quite rightly so, and you've been able to do that. Now have you been able to do that entirely off the basis of your previous experience, or has, have you received all the necessary government guidelines in order, to, in order to produce that document? Has the government essentially guided you as regards screening, uh, PPE, social distancing protocols and so forth? Yeah, both, both Nick. The, 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 the previous experience from the base document and we were able to elaborate on that with, you know, government guidance uh, changes, it, 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 it gets improved, it gets tightened. Uh, so yeah. we've adapted that into, in, 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 into the document and as I said, we've got great assistance from our, our, our colleagues internationally. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good document, uh, we think, and, and now that the, the challenge is to ensure it's, it's, it's applied and, and people understand what they're expected to do and not to yes. do uh, uh, on the track. So, so given that you're set to resume at NACE on June the 8th and you've had full government guidance and you've been able to issue an 80-page, near 80-page document telling everybody exactly what they've got to do, Racing in Great Britain is due to start on June the 1st under the current roadmap and the government has yet to tell the BHA specifically what the guidelines are going to be as regards screening, testing and PPE. When the BHA said there was still a heck of a lot of work to do, I'd imagine you, you probably would agree with them there. Yeah, there's a huge, and I know there's a huge amount of work going on and uh, um, uh, going on er- er- everywhere. Uh, yeah, the, 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 and, and of course like this, the devil is in the detail. Uh, you know, it, 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 it has to be absolutely black and white. Um, but, you know, there's, there's good people involved uh, in this and there's good, hel- as I said, the authorities are helping each other. But it is incredible when you, when, when you absolutely face a situation like this, you know, you know, and you start stripping race meetings back to their bare necessities. It, 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 a, it's surprising, you know, how, 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 how small the number of people that, 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 that you need on the track are and how you can, you can reduce that. But B, you, you, you know, you, as I said, you have to be very, very clear on the advice that you're giving those people. So there's a huge amount of work across every level. And of course, everything we do is, 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 is um, broadcast, is filmed, and is, is, is subject to immediate scrutiny. So uh, it, it needs to be right. And, and you know, people are good. We found that the trainers, the jockeys, the first time round, you know, we're very good with it. They're used to being regulated. They're used to biosecurity uh, in their stables. You know, the breeding industry has been operating safely through the lockdown with good biosecurity arrangements and, and social distancing. So I think generally as a sector, you know, we get it. That said, you know, a chain is as good as strong as its weakest link. So I think you've got to have everybody, you know, you know, fully tuned in and fully, fully aware of what's required. Just remind us what happens if a, a member of stable staff on site or a jockey test positive for, for COVID-19, Brian? 
Well, that's all part of the of 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 of, of the process. You know, the the tracing system we have will ensure you know we have a record of anybody who's been on the racetrack with those people uh, during the previous uh, period. If we're doing our job properly, you know, they should should be socially distanced from those people or, or have been, so there shouldn't be a risk. You know, the 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 testing and tracing is to do with people who have been adjacent to a, a particular person for more than 15 minutes within two meters. You know, so I think that's the criteria that's been used in Ireland, but we will have the records to, to look at that. So if that were to happen, you would have to, you know, uh, contact trace all the people that they've been in contact with and then make an assessment, you know, of whether there's a risk or not a risk with those people. I just want to talk about international cooperation. I'm sure you've had many conversations with the BHA and France Gallo, as you were saying, and, and the racing authorities in Germany and beyond as well. At the moment, you're looking to run the Irish Guineas at the Curra on June 12, 13. That would come a week after the Guineas in Newmarket if, if the British roadmap takes place. And then the Irish Derby would be on its usual date, which is Saturday, June the 27th, which would be a week before the rescheduled Derby and Oaks at Epsom, and then the Irish Oaks on Saturday, July the 18th, with Irish Champions Weekend on its normal uh, position on the 12th and 13th of September. Was there any thought of moving the uh, Irish Derby later, so it would sit in its normal relativity to the to the Derby at Epsom, or or, or not? Yeah, we, we we looked at all those options, and I suppose the the one we landed on is the one that gets us back into the rhythm of the Irish pattern as quickly as possible. You, you have to start on the basis that none of this is ideal. You know, we're, we're, it's going to be a, an exceptional year, whatever way you look at it. Uh, as you said, there's still some uncertainty. We hope not around the resumption in the UK and, and the fact that the UK have settled their guineas and, and Ascot dates, you know, limited room for, for manoeuvre for, for us in making this call. But we, 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 we went with the, the call which said, look, the, the, the Irish pattern has stood the test of time for us and it's there, you know, uh, for a reason. So we looked at saying, look, we could have delayed the guineas by three or four weeks and then delayed everything else uh, on a knock-on basis. And we said, no, look, let's get back into the rhythm of our season. You know, it might be interesting to see for, 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 for a difference what happens when the Irish Derby comes before the English and the French ones, which it has never done before. Uh, you know, we all know it's going to be an unusual year for the pattern. So, you know, having the guineas, uh, 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 the, the English guineas, the Irish guineas, and the, the Ascot races on three consecutive weeks is not ideal. Uh, but we've, we felt it was the lesser of, 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 of two evils, if I could put it that way, uh, in terms of addressing it. So it was to get back into the rhythm of the, the major, ma major pattern races in Ireland as quickly as possible. Brian, just be, be clear for me on the, on the quarantine protocols between Britain and Ireland for those people who want to move between the two countries with horses. What will they have to do? Uh, as I understand it at the moment, Nick, the, 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 the protocols, in our, the government, the government um, guidelines in Ireland are stricter than those in the UK. So I think, I think anybody coming back into Ireland from uh, either a UK visitor or, or an Irish person returning will have to isolate for 14 days. Uh, so that will create some, some, some complications. Now, we heard on Taoiseach during the week saying that this was an issue to be looked at because there would be an advantage in having a common policy. I think the three countries mentioned, ironically, were Britain, Ireland and France, that you could have some sort of common policy about people movement. Um, but we're permitting, uh, you know, international runners uh, in Group 1 and Group 2 races up until the end of June and hopefully beyond that, uh, uh, open to all black type races obviously they will have to operate that there's no problem moving the horses the people movement is more complicated and we'll have to recognize the the guidelines of of each individual country now as i said mayors have been moving between britain ireland and france so you know where there's a will there's a way and we work with britain and with france the racing authorities and the trainers in those countries and with our government to see if we can if we can find a way to crack it would you have welcomed a more uh, a more inclusive conversation as regards the the programming of uh, of race days in britain before you were able to put your program together you said essentially your hand has been well forced and you haven't really had much choice as regards where to put these races because royal ascot put their put their their flag in the ground first and then and they, then the, the new roadmap allowed for the guineas and, and the derbies shortly thereafter 
No, I don't think so. I, I, I think you, you know we, we, we've had, I think, in the last in the last month, we've had three or four uh, European Pattern Committee meetings by, by by Zoom phone calls. So we're we're all talking to each other. I think it's recognised that you know the priority for each of us was to get racing back in our domestic countries, you know, as early as it was safe and possible to do so. So you need to look after your own situation, uh, you know. And I think if any other country was in the same position, mm-hmm. they would have done the same thing. You know, uh, we were. You know, fully advised and fully informed. It just creates a problem uh, then, or, or, or a challenge. Uh, but uh, Nick, these challenges are much more welcome than the ones we were facing in the last yeah. few weeks. You know, it's great to be talking about normal, normal stuff like this, as opposed to you know existential stuff about whether you can or can't race. Uh, you know, so we'll try, you know, if possible, to, to provide some. Um, uh, in the early part of our resumption, try and provide some races that might lead into some of the races at Ascot. Uh, you know, but that's uh, you know the, the, the main priority is to get the system back running sure. here and get racing up and running. As I said, hopefully by the end of June we'll be back in rhythm. Uh, and I know there's been changes at France and the UK uh, overall to the program there. Um, some of these might be, as I said, interesting to see and curious to see how they work. So. Maybe the pattern will come out of it, you know, stronger and, and, and maybe a little different from in future years. But that's that's a longer term issue. It's a chance to try things that we never dared to try before. Steady on now, Brian. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We'll speak to you again soon, no doubt.